Okay, so I filled everything in, and the next thing that we're going to want to do is um, add in some of the graphics and the stitching. Before I do that, let's take a look at what we've got here. First of all, I do have these two groups. I have this bottom group and this top group, and uh, these are each clipping masks. So I have a clipping mask around the outside, but if we double-click on the group in isolation mode, we'll see that this, uh, all of these are actually separate um, shapes that are just overlapping one another inside of the group. And up here I can see all the individual paths that make up the interior of this shoe. Double click on the outside again to uh, go back to the top level. So I have in here a couple of logo uh, pieces, um, both shoes, my two shadow pieces. I could actually group those if I want. And um, this path is just extra. It should really be kind of a part of uh, this group here. So I'll just group them together. In fact, I'll group uh, this, this, and this together. Because those are all one thing. Okay. And uh, now I want to go ahead and add in my logo geometry, which should be pretty darn easy. I think you could figure out how I would do that. So I'll just rotate it into place. Okay, as you can see, I've put in these logos in place, and now I want to add some stitching. I want stitching to go all the way around this thing here, so I'm actually going to move part of it in so there's room for the stitching. And so now I'm going to select, I'm going to double click on my group here to get inside my shoe group, and uh, select this object here. And I want to add stitching all the way around the outside of it and the inside of it on both sides. So um, in order to do that, uh, first I'm going to have to create a brush for that stitch. So my stitching is going to look something like this. I'm going to need a hole where the thread goes through. We'll make that dark. And I'll, I'll go ahead and make it uh, transparency multiply so that no matter what it's on, it'll be dark. And then draw the actual piece of thread, like so. Make it kind of big. And the other piece of thread. And we will make those a thread color whatever color we decide that should be. Now, um, what you may consider doing is making this uh, thread color a global swatch. So what I would do is um, take this guy here, um, make a new swatch for the, for the material, the, the color. So let's go ahead and make this um, you know, yellow. But I'm going to double click on this yellow and inside here I'm going to check global. That way it's easier to change the stitching color later. Okay. Let's see. So we need for these stitches to meet up just perfectly. And so what I'm going to do is bring these up and use my rectangle tool hit Apple U on the keyboard or Control U on the PC and draw a box right over this circle and select both, use the Pathfinder to erase half of my box move that to the back you need to do the same exact thing right up here move it to the back, move it up a little bit Perfect. Now I need to make this into a brush so that it can follow a path. So I'm going to draw a path just to use as an example. Okay, so enter the brushes palette. That's right up here at window brushes. Um, and here it is. So what I could, oh, whoops. 
What I can do is select these objects, rotate them so that they're horizontal. That's important. They have to be horizontal or it won't work. And then click on the new brush button right there. It's going to ask what kind of brush I'm making. This is a pattern brush because we're going to be patterning these stitches all the way along our curve. And in the pattern brush options, I think everything here looks correct for the moment. So just by default, I'm going to click OK. And that looks about right. So if I select this line, click on my brush, you can see that we now have a uh, perfect stitch line. And I can adjust this line however I want, and the stitching will follow right along correctly. I should be able to scale that in the future, make it bigger or smaller. I think actually right now it probably should be smaller, and I'd like for the stitches to be a little further apart. So to do that, I'm just going to take these and spread them out some. And scale the whole thing down a bit. I can make a new brush, pattern. OK, OK, there we go. Now, now that I have that brush, let's go back into our object here, double click a couple times and select this bad boy here. Now I want to add a uh, stitch line inside it. So I will go to the appearance palette, which is right here. And in the appearance palette, you can see that we have a fill that is gray, and we have no stroke. I want to add a new stroke, a second stroke. So I'm going to click Add, oh, click up here and say Add New Stroke. And um, it's going to ask me what that stroke looks like. Well, right now it's black. That's not good enough. So in my brushes palette, over here, I'm going to select this. But I don't want it right on the line. I want it offset from the line. So this is the cool thing about having the appearance palette up. Um, with the second stroke, I can actually offset it so that it's not touching the first one. So if we go to the uh, effect menu, go down to path and go offset path, this is going to offset the path that is selected here. So if I offset it, I can hit preview and you can see that it offsets it right outside. Um, and that looks okay. There we go. So now, even if I adjust this path, the outer path follows it. I could do the same thing for an inner path if I wanted as well. So just for the sake of a demo, I would do this a little bit differently, but just so, so for the sake of a demo, we could add uh, yet another stroke, add new stroke. This one, I will go effect, uh, path, offset path, preview, We'll do negative 5 pixels, okay, and make that also stitching. Oops, not that one, but this one. Make that also stitching. So you can see that we now have two stitch lines. Design-wise, I don't like that at all, but um, in terms of the uh, functionality, it's pretty nice to be able to have multiple stitching on one object. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go stitch some of the rest of this stuff and come right back.